Okay, just to focus in on the activity series reactivity table in your data booklet, I'll just put it here on the left hand side. And what you'll notice is that these things here, the most reactive ones are actually the ones that are just trying to get a full electron shell. Uh, and these ones here are less reactive and so they're less capable of giving a full electron shell. And so what you're going to see is it's basically a tug of war. And so you'll find the reactive metals are the ones that are going to be able to release their electrons the easiest. Uh, and so these ones here are going to lose the tug of war and are going to be the ones that have to take the electrons. So metals high up the reactivity series want to react, therefore they get a full electron shell. They're the ones that lose their electrons, so they're oxidized. And so you could think of oxidized up here. And the ones down, down here are going to be uh, reduced because they're going to gain the electrons in the tug of war when you put two together. So that's just basically metal reactivity displacement reactions you may have covered before, but now we're doing a bit of unit one interpretation added to it and throwing a bit of uh, unit three terminology onto it as well. So this is uh, an example reaction. So if you have zinc and copper, uh, let's assume that they're always to two plus, especially for the transition metals. We find out where the two of them are. So we can see uh, zinc's over here. Uh, copper's down here. So we know this one here is the one that's going to be oxidized. And so that's going to be the one that's going to like to go to lose the electrons. Uh, and this one here is going to be the one that is reduced. And that's going to gain the electrons to become the metal. So that's how we write it here. So we can see that zinc has given off electrons here to become oxidized. And copper has gained electrons uh, to become reduced. So that's how we work out uh, reactivity using this uh, reactivity series.